I have to admit that sometimes in Flanders things get kind of humid. But then again, we need this water to create our world famous beers. Not only do we have five Trappist breweries, on the other hand, we have special beers with special tastes, special flavors. What do you say if I take you on a journey through the world of hops, of wheat, and then again of barleys? We're going from sauce to beers. Let's go. And here we are in the region near Poperinge, where since the 14th century already they've been growing these hops. Have a look at these. I think these are ready to be harvested. Back in the heyday, in the 60s, you had a lot of hop growers here. Today we only count 17 anymore, but we're working on the revival. So Joris, all this around us is yours. Yes, I've been growing hops. Well, I took over the farm from my father in 93. He was a hop grower. My grandfather was a hop grower and my great great grandfather and probably a few more generations. We don't we don't count anymore. So tell me what is about Popringe and hop growers? We have a very fertile sand loam soil okay. which contains a let's say a big buffer of water. Uh -huh. Even in the very dry years we had a couple of years back we still have a reasonable good crop. Mm -hmm. But there is also a historical reason. So this goes way back to the 14th century, 15th century, when the, the days of the clot weaving uh, was going on. Yeah. It was us forbidden to do any more clot weaving. So there was poverty going on. Yeah. And so then the, the, the Abbey of St. Omar, they kind of uh, were you know, the boss over here and they, they sent a couple monks to uh, Bavaria, yeah. Germany. Yeah. Then they came back with a couple hop roots, and that's the, the historical reason why it's uh, been around here. Mm. If you open them up, they're almost ready to be picked. You see that yellow powder? Yes. Which are the lupulin glands. Yeah. And these contain masses of all kinds of aromas yeah. uh, for the bitterness, alpha acids, beta acids, whatever. So it, it keeps the, the beer fresh. Uh, fresh, yeah. exactly. Oh. Marvelous. You still have some on your nose Oh, there. yeah, okay, that, that's the idea. <laughs> you have a unique story. Um, yeah, I'm the only organic hop farmer uh, around here since 20, 25 years. And there are, let's say, 30 or something in the whole world. And the demand for organic hops is really growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always short on hops. So not only do you grow your own hops, you want to yes. implement it in beer as well, because that's the whole yes. point. So we really started that just about 10 years ago now, in 2011. Brewing my beer with my own hops in a brewery on the farm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can we have a taste, maybe? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Thing is, you guys, you offer these hops firstly to Belgian breweries. Why? Instead of just you know uh, exporting all around, more uh, taking care of local uh, colleague brewers. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense that I send up 200 kilograms of hops to the United States from farm to plate, or in this case, from farm to glass. Of, of course. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It'll still be my first Kijkopen beer. Yeah. This is really refreshing. You find the hops in there, but they're not overdone. Exactly. It's still a very drinkable beer. That's what we mm. want, making drinkable beers. So what's this? What are we looking at? You can see the brew house, the cool ship on the top, the old horizontal fermenters, now replaced by the cylinder conical vessels, in which we are doing our fermentation now, mm -hmm. and the old kiln. Wow, that's amazing. Meet Rudy, he's brewmaster here in the Rodenbach Brewery in Rooselare. I've met him for five minutes, and something tells me I'm going to be here for a long time. Let's go and visit Rodenbach. Here you can see the old brew house, built as a steam brew house in 1864, replaced another, another older brew house that dated from 1821. You can actually see where they stopped building and then they continued constructing. So this is all founded by the family Rodenbach. Great, Back that's right, day. that's right. Yeah. All right, excellent. From the beginning it was a molting brewing plant and here you can see an old mold kiln, built in 1864. This is amazing, yep. so this is like your oven, is that it? 
it is a kiln where you dry your green malt, your green barley, okay. and they dry it on a temperature between 80 and 105 degrees. So it's a little bit burnt, is that yeah, it? Yeah, slightly, slightly okay. burnt, slightly caramelized. So that gives the red color to our beer. Mm. This is quite nice, actually. No, yeah. also because sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet. Here yep. we can go inside. So this is where they made the fire. So you don't want smoke to go into the barley or the malt because no. then you would get a peated or more smoky. And yeah, and this is what they want, don't want to have. Exactly. Right. So cokes, very important. Cokes, yeah. All right. Well, you need to be flexible when visiting Rodenbach. Yeah. <laughs> and not too tall. And not too tall. <laughs> and not have a bad back as well. So this is an old steam kettle. Ancient. That's what the, the feeling I get here, you know. So now I will show you something that makes Rodemach so world famous. Let's have a look. Wow! <laughs> this makes me feel like, I don't know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Or maybe Benny Bonka and the Beer Factory. <laughs> How many liters go into one of these fooders? 65,000 liters or 650 hectoliters because brewers always count in hectoliters. I've visited many wineries in my life and this is exactly the smell that you get there. It's the smell of oak. Yeah, but also the, the smell of beer and maceration. Yes, of course. Oh, wow. Here you can and see here you can see the inner side of a, of a vat. So this is what you guys are known for. This is our second secret. We look for um, the taste of our wild yeast culture who is at the inner side of our vats. And so when we start to top a vat, we pump in the vat a starter from another vat, the best culture we have, and then we fill it up with young beer. So we try to make our beer every time better and better. This is the result of centuries of perfectionism. The proof of the pudding and the eating. Exactly. Straight from the vats, this is gonna be an experience. This is a fruit beer on wood, an exceptional brew that we aged here in cellar number three. Mm -hmm. I can see red. Yeah. So it's you have red a fruit. Brown beer with red fruits such as sour cherries. Sour cherries, raspberries, and cranberries. And cranberries. The key is um, an early middle age preservation method of beer before the use of hops. Mm -hmm. This is the key and the spirit of Rodemar. Exactly, and that's your USP, of course. That's this what makes you USP. unique. And therefore we need this wooden vat, yeah. therefore we need the colored molds, therefore we need our yeast culture who is inside the wooden vats. Uh -huh. That makes our product so unique. Excellent. Rudy, thank you so much. Cheers. It was a pleasure to have you here. The old brewery De Horen, and next to that, the brewery Artois, owned by the family Artois and home to the legendary beer, Stella Artois. Now, when it comes to beers, we Belgians, we do know a few things about brewing and tasting and so on. We have a richness that is unseen, a vastness of delicacies in the beer world that is, you know, being frowned upon by the rest of the world. And I understand why. And that's why I've come to the city of Leuven today to find a chef who today is being very creative with beers in his kitchen. Let's uh, get acquainted with Gastrobar Hop. Bram, I know about beer restaurants. Mm -hmm. Usually they have a lot of beer in their meals, but you're a gastro pub. Mm -hmm. What exactly is the difference then? I think the, the main difference is we just like to uh, serve um, a good quality food, really uh, craft products, uh, but not the high-end restaurant stuff. So to be more inventive with um, local and more um, lesser known products. So what are you doing? Are you doing some sort of food pairing where you add a beer to a meal and make sure that the flavors blend in together? Is that it? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. So we're not cook a lot with beer. It's not like we uh, have to put beer inside the dish, but I think the gastronomic potential uh, of beers is very wide. So I think you can pair every meal with a good beer. It's more complex than wine in that sense that it's, um, you have the, the extra bitterness in beer, which exactly. makes it a little bit complexer, but more, more, in, more interesting. Of course, if you have to talk about some beers that are suitable for the kitchen, mm -hmm. which beers would come to mind for you? 
if you talk about Terroir, I think the, the, the best example is the, the Zenne Valley. So you have uh, all the local produced geuses. Some have more acidity, some are a little bit more mellow. For instance, like uh, Drie Fontaine, they use um, a lot of local grown cherries, sour cherries mm. and raspberries. So I think the Terroir is very much there in the beers, even if you look to the, to the hops. Um, so we have uh, still some uh, hop farmers in Belgium. Mm. It's also culture, it's knowledge, it's, yes. um, yeah. Exactly. So what do we have here? Um, well, those are just examples of my favorite beer styles. So if you start with Geuze, uh, this is a very young one. Uh, so the very um, much apple sourness. And fermentation it, on the bottle. Yes, re-fermentation on the bottle. And Geuze is always a blend of three different years of beer. So yeah. it's a really a blended beer. It's a long and uh, old tradition, yeah. uh, which is also a very old tradition. And I think very interesting uh, gastronomically is Saison. In the winter they brewed a simple beer and what they had to do because it was not like very hygienic they brewed it they put in a lot of hops yeah so you have a typical bitterness a light sourness and always very herbal and then finally uh, yeah maybe my my favorite kind of beer so it's an um, old brown beer so um, it's traditionally brewed in the in the south of uh, east and west Flanders yes it's also a barrel aged beer mm, wow. uh, with with lots of sourness Lovely. But it's um, it always has some body. It's some uh, yeah brown, but it's, it's not like a, a brown trappist beer. It's it's sour. It's complex. It's mm. barrel aged, mm. and this one, for example, has been on um, some grapes. Yeah. So there you have it. If you ask a Flemish person about their beers, you are guaranteed to have a night filled with nice explanations. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What are we going to be cooking today? Uh, my garden was full of these, so th those are re actually wild hops. Wow. We put a little bit of the young hops inside the, the pancakes. All right. Uh, which are herbs pancakes. And then we're going to um, marinate some, um, um, some haddock with, with beer. So. Right. Normally, when you pour a beer glass, you hold the glass like this, not with geus. You don't no. do that with geus. You just not pour necessary. it like that. This is history in a glass. This beer has been brewed in Belgium for over centuries. What you're tasting is medieval, even. Voilà. Hop rolls with a beer marinated haddock and a cream of fresh cottage cheese with beer. What you do is you reinterpret traditional kitchen or you use the elements from nostalgic flavors and you do something creative with it, is that it? Uh, yeah, the menu is always evolving and we don't, don't do, do a traditional beer kitchen, uh, but I think there's some nostalgia in the pancakes and also we try to use beer in a different way. Chef, santé, smakelijk. <laughs> Original, tasteful and full of history and heritage. That's what you get here in Flanders. Cheers.